And one last announcement that I have is if you will join me as I go to Philadelphia um, at Total Praise Ministries on Saturday, April the 23rd, they have an event called Sister to Sister. And we want to be able to support that. Ladies and the men are invited as well. But ladies, I'm looking forward to some of you going up with me as we do that on Saturday, April the 23rd. It starts at 1 o'clock. I want to be there. It's going to be an event to be that there's going to be a lot of folks there. So we want to be able to get there in time so that we can be comfortable where we are and that we can be together as uh, those who travel with me. But we want to be able to support our district missionary, um, my district missionary sister, Michelle Duplessis, and her district as they celebrate sister to sister. This is an annual event, and we want to be there to support them. I hear it is fabulous. So if you want to go, please let me know, and we will go up together. Amen? Also, for your listening ears, I do not have the um, tickets yet. Um, oh, by the way, for our Mother's Day dinner, the tickets are here. See Sister Doris, wherever you are, right wave your hand. She has tickets, and the seating is limited for our Mother's Day dinner. So please see her about those tickets today. And um, August, um, announcing this, I do not have the flyer. I do not have the specific details, but I'm announcing it because I want you to put it on your calendar. Uh, on August the 27th, the Department of Women of the Pennsylvania Keystone Jurisdiction will be going to Sight and Sound to see David. You want, if you've never been to Sight and Sound, you want to go. It is beautiful, amazing, and it's, it's um, a stage that covers the whole side walls and the back wall of the theater. They use live animals. It is amazing. So if you want to go, let me know. I am collecting names for tickets. I'll get back to you with all the information as soon as I have it in my hand. And Sister Sharina back there saying, I'm going. <laughs> Amen. We, you don't want to miss it. This It will be a beautiful event, and I'll bring more information as um, I get that information. We are having um, next Sunday for our children they will be doing a little bit of an Easter program, but there will also be some activities for them after church. Those of you who volunteer to bring any candy or anything, um, Sister Doris needs you to deliver that on Saturday so that she can have everything set up. Is there a specific time? Okay, bring it, you can bring it Sunday. And give it to Sister Mary, the usher. She was the smiling lady that you saw when you came in the door today. Um, so those are your announcements. Please write things down, and we'll try to continue to announce. But our next up and coming is our Good Friday service, so you don't want to miss that. At this time, I'm going to put you into the hands of Evangelist Kelly Harrison. She'll be bringing you the announcements for Ranch Memorial Church of God in Christ. Praise the Lord, saints. The announcements for Range Memorial Church of God in Christ are as follows. Every Sunday morning at 9.30, there is Sunday school here at Grace Church of God in Christ. Our teacher is Deacon Clarence Thomas, and there is a class for the children, which I teach. So we have every age covered. We ask that you come out and learn the word of God because Sunday school is the best school. Every Monday night at 7 p.m. and on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Monday is our prayer, Tuesday night is our Bible study. Both can be accessed through the Zoom line. By phone, that is 301 seven one five eight five nine two and the zoom meeting code is seven eight four six one one nine six one five and the passcode 
377-339. Mark your calendars. There is a change of information. Um, Range Memorial Church will be worshiping with Grace Church of God in Christ on Easter Sunday morning. We will be here next week to worship Resurrection Sunday in this building with our brothers and sisters of Grace Church of God in Christ. We will return to Range Memorial on Sunday, April 24th, 2022. Mark your calendar for um, our 100th anniversary celebration. It is a homecoming weekend that begins Friday, November the 11th. At 6 p.m. we will have a meet and greet gathering. On Saturday, November the 12th, we will have an old-fashioned joy night. And on Sunday, November 13th, in the morning at 11 a.m., we will have our 100th Founders Day celebration. And at 3.30 p.m., a homecoming celebration where people will be coming from all over. Please mark your calendars. We thank you for your attention. Amen. Come on, clap your hands and tell the Lord. Thank you. Amen. We thank you and magnify his holy name because he's been good to us. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. I wish I had somebody to know what I was talking about. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad.
if you stand for the service this afternoon. If you stand for the service. Look at somebody next to you and tell them, if you stand for the service this afternoon, amen, you're welcome to go downstairs and eat. You're welcome to go downstairs and eat. But if you're not staying, I'll see you next Sunday. <laughs> I can't make it no plainer than that, Mr. Michelle. <laughs> now, if you're going to stay, I'm going to feed you. Amen. Because we're welcoming a church that has never been here before. He, he, he's, he's my friend down, down where I live at. And he's coming up with this congregation. These, these, my back is there now. They go, you know. <laughs> my back is running. I got some back is running. Yeah. <laughs> they not back is. Yeah, my back is running. They ain't back is. Yeah, right there. They, they, they. <laughs> they kind of hostile. Yeah, something. <laughs> uh, but they're, they're, they're coming this, this afternoon, and if you want to stay, you can eat. If not, I'll see you next week. Yeah. I can't be no further than that. Yeah. I, I, I look out for the saints now. I look out for the saints. But we come to magnify the Lord yeah. today. God is listening. God to us. All we love. 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 trying to tell folks that God is up to something. Yeah. God is up to something. Yeah. Amen. Lord have mercy. We had a moving here last Sunday. Yeah. We had a moving here last Sunday. Yeah. Amen. And, 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 and I, I went home and I was talking to my daughter I said, I have to implement this new rule around here at Grace. <laughs> Amen. I got to implement this new rule around here at Grace. And if you jump, I'm going to jump with you.
Y'all mess around and hear somebody will get saved. Y'all mess around and hear somebody will get delivered. Somebody will get healed. Somebody will get that breakthrough that they've been waiting on. Ah, but we got to move on. But if my mind showed me right this triumph from Sunday, this the day that Jesus did what? He came. Yeah. So let's go. Get that one done. <laughs> Amen. Amen. 
And we're going to put this train in neutral. Amen. So if it roll out again, we just going to roll with it. Amen. But we thank God for all of our visitors. Amen. Thank God for all of you. Thank God for all of you. We welcome you in yeah, grace. That's how we have church. Amen. We, amen. I'm, it's time out. It's time out. I keep telling folks, I don't want to have church as usual. But I want to have unusual church. When you have unusual church, things happen. When you have unusual church, things move. When you have unusual church, you leave out different than how you came back. When you have Right now, right now, 
Right now, we're going to do Palm Sunday. Amen. With the triumphal entry and all of that. Hosanna. But next Sunday, we come in here with the heat.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's worthy. Don't stop praising him. Hallelujah. He's so worthy. He's so worthy. He's so worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We didn't stop the praise with the hand clapping, but we worship him in spirit and in truth. So even in the silence, we say hallelujah to your name. Because we're saved and sanctified. Somebody set off a praise in the building today. Hallelujah. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're so worthy. You're so worthy. Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem riding on an ass and the colt of an ass. The people praised him in the street. So we say today, ride on King Jesus.
Jesus. No man can hinder no man. I don't care what you do. No man. Now, I'm going to try to behave myself and preach this message. I'm going to try to behave myself and preach this message. It is Palm Sunday. The day that Jesus rode triumphantly into Jerusalem. We find these words in the book of John. The book of John. The 12th chapter of John. We find these words in the 12th verse, starting at the 12th verse. On the next day, much people would come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, yes. took branches of palm trees, and went forth to meet him, and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon, as it was written, Fear not, daughters of Zion, behold, the king cometh sitting on an ass. Amen. So, here we are, Palm Sunday. It was Passover time. And Jews came from the end of the earth to Jerusalem. Wherever Jews lived, it was their ambition to observe at least one Passover in Jerusalem. In addition to those who had come afar, there were Jews who had come from within Palestine itself. Now the law required every adult male Jew who lived within 20 miles of Jerusalem to come to that holy city. On one occasion, a census was taken of the number of lambs slain at the Passover feast. And the number was given at 265,000. A minimum of 10 persons was required for each lamb. If the estimate is correct, then there must have been approximately 2,700,000 people at the Passover feast. Mm -hmm. Even if the number is are exaggerated, the crowd must have been enormous. At Jerusalem and all of its surrounding areas must have been packed with people. Amen. Come on, come on. At Passover time, the Jews remembered the deliverance of this of their ancestors from Egyptian bondage. Nationalistic feelings ran high during this time of Jesus. As the present generation of Israelites cleft under the yoke of Roman oppression, during Passover messianic hope and expectations were strongest. During Passover, the Sadducees and Roman guards were most concerned about keeping order, were always on edge, lest some incident occurred which might arouse the smoldering hostility and desire for freedom, which was always just below the surface of his uneased peace. 
awaiting for the right moment to burst forth. Now, according to John's account, it was during Passover that Jesus had come to nearby Bethany mm -hmm. to see about his friend, his good friend, Lazarus. Uh -huh. Jesus had risen Lazarus from the dead and news about this great miracle had reached the streets. With his curiosity, restless, hopeless crowd, as Jesus headed towards Jerusalem, an intense crowd that had been with him in Bethany and had seen his mighty work accompanying him. Word went out that Jesus, the person who raised Lazarus from the dead, was coming to town. A crowd of Passover pilgrims, some of whom were curious, some of whom were well-wishers, and some of whom were devout and lived in the constant readiness to receive the Messiah. Well, went to greet Jesus and his followers. When the joyful Bethany crowd met with the expect, met with the expected Jerusalem crowd, the celebrative atmosphere of the Passover around them, a spontaneous combustion of excitement and spirit broke out. Jesus, who was riding on the back of a donkey, was received like a conquering king. Some cut down palm branches from trees and waved them in the air and spread them along the road while others spread their garment in the road. Yeah. The multitude shouted Hosanna yeah. to the son of David. Blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord, yeah. even the king of Israel. Yeah. Now Matthew's account tells us that Jesus entered Jerusalem, there was so much rejoicing that the whole city was moved. John tells us that the Pharisees expressed dismay, remarking that the whole world has gone after him. Now this had have to been a very significant day for, the, for his disciples who had left all to follow him, for his friends who loved him, and for our Lord. For if the writer of the Gospels had put down their pen and in their account with Palm Sunday triumphal entry, then we would have had a, neat, a, a nice, neatly packed, essential, trouble-free, successful story. And what better place for the gospel to end than at the moment when Jesus, this small town carpenter turned teacher and miracle worker, prophet from Nazareth, rode in triumph to praise of the multitude as he entered big town Jerusalem. What better place to end the gospel story than that moment when Jesus is riding they man the clip of popularity, acceptability, and respectability, and success. What better place to end the gospel at the moment when the crowd seemed to literally fall at Jesus' feet and his future looked brighter than ever. But we all know that if the gospel ends with Palm Sunday event, well, there would have been an, an, an complete gospel. Yeah, that's right. If the gospel ended with Palm Sunday, we might think that Palm Sunday was Jesus' greatest hour. If the gospel ended with Palm Sunday, we might think that our Lord's message, ministry, and mission had truly been accepted and understood by those who cheered him. 
we might think that the crowd who greeted him stayed with him. But understand that it's easy to be a part of the Palm Sunday crowd. Why? Because everyone likes a winner. Everyone likes to ride in on the coattail and be a part of the team that seems to be going places. When the multitudes are singing Jesus' praises, when following him is the end thing to do, when there's no risk, no inconveniences, no great sacrifice, no demand being placed upon our obedience, time or talent, when no, re amen, no requests are being made for our money, it's easy to shout Hosanna. It's easy to join Jesus in high moments of rapture of celebration. Amen. We naively wish that all moments would be like this one. But the Palm Sunday story, while gratifying, does not tell the whole story. Christians who walk with Jesus only on Palm Sunday when things are going well, amen, and every day seem happy, miss out on the real victory. Yes. Christians who see Jesus only as a conquering king, living up to their own expectation, miss out on the real message, ministry, and meaning of Jesus. Yes. People, amen, who don't go beyond Palm Sunday, don't go beyond the Palm Sunday mentality. Uh -huh. Miss out on these, the, the essence of the gospel. Yes. Amen. To, and to really understand who Jesus was, what he was about, and what he can really do for you, to you, in you, and with you, and through you, you must go beyond Palm Sunday. Yes. For Palm Sunday marks the beginning of Jesus' last earthly ministry before his death. And yet so much of what we know as the gospel, as the gospel re amen, revolves around this last week. In, Mark, in Matthew's gospel, the Palm Sunday story is found in chapter 21. But his gospel doesn't end until chapter 28. In Mark's gospel, the Palm Sunday event appears in chapter 11. But his work doesn't end until chapter 16. So about one third of Matthew and Mark's gospel are devout are devoted to what happened after Palm Sunday. In the Gospel of Luke, Palm Sunday is found in chapter 19. But Luke's Gospel doesn't end until chapter 24. About one-fourth of Luke's Gospel tells about what happened after Jesus, amen, to Jesus after Palm Sunday. In John, the God, the, in John's Gospel, Palm Sunday occurs in chapter 12. But John doesn't end until chapter 21. So almost half of John's gospel would be left in out if we stop with Palm Sunday. So if we want to understand the gospel fully, if we want to be the Christians that God would like for us to be, we must go beyond Palm Sunday. And our attitudes towards life we must go beyond Palm Sunday and our thinking about salvation. We must go beyond Palm Sunday and our living, amen, unto God in the power of the Holy Ghost. But to obtain the fullness of the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, we must go beyond Palm Sunday. 
We must follow Jesus on that Monday. After when he went into the temple and saw merchants buying and selling, scheming and extorting, cheating and lying. And he went and drove them out of his father's house. If we are to grow beyond Palm Sunday, we must first come to grips with the imperfection of the church. So many times, seasoned as well as new Christians have become discouraged because we see so much of the same behavior and attitudes in the church that we see in the world. As in many of you, I wish that the church as we know it was perfect. But if it was, then I couldn't belong to it and you couldn't belong to it. The church is not made up of perfect people, but rather imperfect people who are striving for perfection. As in many struggles, Sometimes we fail and sometimes we succeed. But we keep, amen, on striving just the same. We must go beyond Palm Sunday and follow Jesus on Tuesday after when he debated with those who criticized him and tried to discredit his teaching. On Palm Sunday, we become lost in the ecstasy of the crowd and believe that everyone appreciated what was going on. We must go beyond Palm Sunday to, dis to, di to discover that righteousness has its flows. We can't allow a Tuesday devil to take our Palm Sunday spirit. We can't allow a Tuesday gossiper to steal our Sunday joy. We can't allow a Tuesday busybody to discover us from the business of the kingdom. We can't lose, amen, we can't afford to lose our salvation on or over a Tuesday critic. Like Jesus, all we can do is answer them in the power of God's word and hold on to the profession of our faith. We, we must move beyond Palm Sunday and follow Jesus on Wednesday after. On Wednesday, Jesus, on Wednesday, Judas. One of Jesus' homies made a hookup with the authorities to betray him. Amen. And one of the painful lessons we learn, amen, we, as we go beyond the Palm Sunday, that every church has, and every family, every circle of friends and associates has a Judas. We must move beyond Palm Sunday and follow Jesus Thursday. Follow him to the upper room where Jesus sat down with his disciples at the Last Supper, broke bread and said, take eat, for this is my body. Jesus took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. We must go beyond Palm Sunday. Amen. You will learn that saying goodbye to those you love. When you go beyond Palm Sunday, you can make sacrifices for those you love. Even though, amen, even though present circumstances 
may indicate that your sacrifices are in vain. Yeah. Follow Jesus on Thursday yeah. to Gethsemane in here. Yeah. As he prayed, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but as thou will. When you go beyond Palm Sunday, you can pray your way through in your darkest hour until you obtain victory, which comes by faith. Follow Jesus on Thursday as he stood before his accusers with power to, dis to, to destroy him. But he never said a mumbling word. When you go beyond Palm Sunday, you can face Satan's rage with the power of peace and calmness. When you go beyond Palm Sunday and follow Jesus on Good Friday as he bore his own rugged cross to Calvary's mountain, for Jesus said unto us, if any man will come after me, let him leave the security of Palm Sunday, deny himself, and take up his cross and follow me. Follow Jesus to the tomb where the authorities hasten to lay him and wait for another day to prepare Beyond Pop Sunday, you will learn how to bury your pain in the face of heartbreak, Calvary experience, and uh, wait on God. Somebody might ask, well, does the gospel end here? And the answer is no. For Matthew Gospel recorded the, the, the crucifixion and burial in chapter 26 and 27 but there's another chapter and mark the crucifixion and burial is found in chapter 15 but there's another chapter and Luke the gospel the crucifixion and burial are found in chapter 23 but there's another chapter and John, the crucifixion and burial is found in chapter 19. But there's two more chapters. So never forget that there's another chapter beyond Good Father. There's another chapter beyond suffering and tribulation. There's another chapter beyond heartache and pain.
the quill. But it's coming. He's coming. Yeah, he's coming. Grandmama. Grandmama, I used to say, he may not come when you want him. Oh, somebody know that. He may not come when you want it. Ah, but he's yeah. right on top. Yeah. So the king is coming. Yeah. Yes, he's coming. Thank you. And he's coming for me. For me. Yeah. Yes. He's coming. Thank you, Lord. Just for me. Thank you, Lord. And I tell him thank you. Thank you, sir. I tell him thank you. Thank you. I tell him thank you. Thank you. I tell him thank you. Thank you. I tell him thank you. Thank you, Jesus. He's coming. Thank you, Lord. Just for me. Thank you. Just for me. I wish I had somebody who believed that. Thank you. Just for me, make it personal, just, just for me, yes, just for me, he's coming, just for me, when he's done with me, he gonna move to you, but he got to start with me, he's coming, just for me, stand on your feet, thank you, Lord, hallelujah, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's coming. He's coming. So right on. Lord. King Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. King Jesus. No man. No man. Yeah, they thought they were going to stop you, but no man. They thought they were going to throw some of them blocks in your way, but no man can hinder you. Yes. Right on. King Jesus. Thank you. Because you could me. For me. And that same Jesus. Thank you. That same Jesus. That same, that same Jesus. That same. that same Jesus. Who came for me. Can come for you. That same Jesus, we we often we often want to get it right and try to get it right and get it fixed up and do it right and have every eye dotted and every T crossed and we try to get it together, but we can't get it together. That's why that's why somebody said that I came to Jesus just as I was. I was weary, wounded, and sad. But I found in him a resting place. And he has made me glad. I, amen. I couldn't get it right. So I said, I'm just going to go to him and all my baggage, all my hang ups, amen, all my bad habits, I'm going to go to him. Yes. And he. Receive me who I was. Yes. And that same Jesus. That same Jesus. Who came. Yes. For me. Yes. Is here to come for you. Is here. To come for you. That same Jesus. That rode into. Into Jerusalem. That same Jesus. That they waved palm branches and shouted Hosanna. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. That same Jesus. Who they lied on that same Jesus. Ah, that same Jesus. Who they crucified, that same Jesus. Who they laid in the tomb, that same Jesus who stayed there, but yet that Sunday morning got up with all power in his hand. That same Jesus. Ah, that same Jesus. 
is here for you. And stop waiting to try to get it right. Because you'll never get it right. But he was hung up for your hang up. So he got it right for us. That we can go to him just as we are. Weary, wounded, sad, and find in him a rest in place. That's why he said, come unto me, all ye who are laboring and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of it, for my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. What a better day, what a better time, a perfect time for you to be here. And God is tugging at you. He's tugging at you. For you to give your life to Him. For you to finally make that decision and step out. Yeah. And say, Lord, here I am. Thank you. Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. If I'm talking to you, just 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 step out. If you don't want to come all the way, I'll come meet you. This is your time. This is your opportunity. This is it. Thank you. If you're looking for a church, a church that's not ashamed of praising God, that's not ashamed to express ourselves where the word is, where you can be fed and love. Here we are to receive you. Uh, say, I've been out of church. The pandemic did this, the pandemic did that. But what's your excuse now? Uh, what's your excuse now? Thank you, Jesus. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you.
is not perfect, but it's better than what it would be. It is, it is, it is, it is better than what it would be. And I'm telling you this much, each day, get a little easier. Each burden get a little lighter. Yes. dropped in my spirit. Now, we will take out life insurance. We will take out life insurance and make sure that we have the right insurance to bury us Make sure our children, and we take out insurance. But we don't have us. But we don't think about eternal insurance. We don't think about eternal insurance. Yeah, the bigger your policy is, we. Lord, especially if it's here. We're going to give you a nice funeral. Yeah, we're going to give you a nice funeral. We're going to preach all that stuff. Might even dance a little bit. Going to the cemetery. Come on back and we pass. But I'm not the type of preacher who preach that everybody is going to heaven. I don't preach that. If I know just because you come to church don't make you a saint. Doesn't mean that you're going to die and go to heaven. You got to get right when the time is there for you to get right. Yeah. After death comes the judgment. Yes. Yes. Welcome to tomorrow's not promised. Not promised. That's right. And I'm only saying this to about two people in here. Have your way, God. Have your way, Lord. It's only to two people in here. The day that you hear my voice, harder, not your heart. Because tomorrow is in promise. Tomorrow. I would rather die and find out that there isn't no heaven. I haven't missed out on the thing. But it'll be a sad thing to die and find out that there is. I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna leave it alone. Stay right there. Stay right there. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. God can handle it better than you can. Leave it alone. Better than you can leave it alone. God can handle it better than you can. But you 
can't say you didn't hear it.
Amen. So, but he doesn't preach long. So we can go home and watch the Ten Commandments or something. <laughs> Yeah. 